at what point does, does do things like influencer marketing, Instagram marketing, are you still able, obviously when you're building a brand and you are, you know, you want to run your, your social media, you want to run Instagram as well. You potentially want to work with influencers. Are you still working with influencers on the drop shipping side as well when you're not building a brand just, just for like the, the, the transaction, you know, just for the, the fact that they can drive sales still, or do you only reserve that for your brand? I only reserve that for my brand. And here, here's the reason why, right? So with drop shipping, most people will never get a sample, right? Because let's say if you're in the US, you can get a sample from China, quote unquote, quickly, right? Because it's like maybe seven, 10 days, right? But if you're in a country like Costa Rica, and trust me, like 50% of people, 60% of people are international, you're never going to get a sample in 10 days. It's probably going to take a month, right? So when you don't order, order samples, it's not realistic to tell an influencer, hey, can you use my product? Can you use my product in a live video and wear it? Because like if you order a shirt, first of all, you never know if the sizing is gonna be good or bad, high quality, the sizes are gonna be off. Maybe the Chinese supplier will tell you it's US sizing, but it was really Asian sizing. So you cannot realistically tell an influencer to go on a live video to use your product if you've never seen it before. It's not, if they don't like it, they're not gonna show it to their audience, right? So since this is the case, what most people do on influencer marketing with dropshipping is go to kind of like these viral Instagram profiles, like uh, the gadget profile or whatever the name is of the profile, where there's not a celebrity. There's not like a person that represents the profile. It's just like cool stuff, cool memes, cool gadgets. They make a post of your product and they and you drive traffic to your store. That's how you do it with dropshipping, because unless you actually get the sample and unless you actually know that it's a good product, you cannot send it to an influencer, right? So that's kind of like the influencer marketing model for dropshipping, uh, where you just tell a viral fan, a viral page to promote your product. But when it comes to branding, you know the value of your product and you know it's so good because you put time into the development of the product. You know it's so good that you can perfectly go ahead to, uh, in, my, in my case, women's fashion, we do like uh, tropical designs because of Costa Rica. Costa Rica is kind of like the... The, what what inspires the brand. So we could perfectly go to a, a girl, right? And tell her, hey, we have these products. We think they're a perfect fit for your brand. You're gonna love them. We're gonna sell them for free. And would you be willing to shoot a live video using our product? And we just ask for for a fee, if you have a fee, et cetera, we negotiate. But in this case, it's a different story because now when the influencer goes live wearing a product, that the connection between the audience is a lot different, right? When, when, when the celebrity is using the product in a live video, remember this person already has a relationship with your audience, with their audience. They're, like their audience likes them. So if you, they were a product, they want to buy the product, not because the product is good, they, like it's going to be good, but because the person is wearing it, right? So the, buy, the conversion rate is going to be 10 times higher because there's a person, there's a relationship that happens before that is there to back up that transaction. And um, that's so freaking powerful. And you cannot have that in dropshipping if you don't know what you're selling. So I think it's just two different types of influencer marketing models, right? And you just, that's why like, even for branding, man, like you can do influencer marketing to a whole other level. Like the deal with the influencer can be, I'm gonna pay you so that you make the live video, not, not just a post, the live video, right? And I'm gonna pay you more to do that because I'm gonna make more money. Here's an interesting. So yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying, and it it makes sense. If you're just slamming, it's if you're if you have the mindset where you're if you're slamming drop shipping products and you send it out to influencers, and the packaging is crappy, maybe that influencer will and the product isn't great, and you haven't seen it. Like maybe the influencer or the or the viral site will still throw it up there, but the connection won't be there. All that invisible stuff of of like, wow, I had a good customer experience when I received this you know, it won't be there. And so it won't be as authentic. Whereas when you're building the brand, you take care of the packaging, you take care of the whole customer experience. And that is the same thing that the influencer experiences as well. And then that will come through in their post, you'd like to think. Yeah, exactly. Like, trust me, um, the nowadays influencers value their audience. They guard them. They guard their audience with their life, right? Like literally they are, they think about their audience all day, like sleeping, in the shower, they're like, how can I add value? How can I, how, how can I get my audience to like me? So they're never gonna be willing to promote a shitty product on their story or on their profile because they don't wanna ruin the relationship with their audience. Like, 
I don't promote like almost anything, man. I, I get probably affiliate offers uh, to promote softwares and stuff like that every single week. And I, I turn everything down because if I don't use the product myself, how, how can I promote it to my audience? It's not ethical, right? So I, I got to be sure that it's actually something valuable. If it's valuable, you see me like talking about apps sometimes, like, like shop message or some apps that actually make me money, but because I've used them. And I'm not going to sell something that might not benefit my audience. And that's how influencers think. And when you have full control over everything, you can guarantee that, I mean, they're going to like your stuff. Yeah. One of the, I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine, Colin McGuire, uh, who we're going to be doing some really cool stuff with, and he's doing influencer marketing, uh, where he'll, he'll basically come up, he'll find an influencer, he'll, he'll find his ideal influencer and he'll pitch them on actually creating a collection around that influencer. So instead of just having them use a product, he, he basically gets them to do a photo shoot or a video shoot or whatever, pays them whatever he has to, and but gets them to license their image for him to use actually on his site, not just on his ads. So then he actually gets the influencers um, promoting the brand externally, but then when people come, they see that there is a collection by this particular person. And I think, I don't know, I feel like for apparel, there could be a, an interesting opportunity potentially there as well. Is that something you, you've tested or would consider testing? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's this brand that I that I follow. It's very, very successful. I'm not sure. Well, you might know about it. So Pura yeah. bracelets, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, very, totally. Very yeah. Yeah. Huge. So these guys, they have an influencer that's uh, the profile of the influencer is called Dreaming Out Loud, right? This girl, her name is Haley, and she's been one of the top ambassadors uh, for Pura Vida bracelets for a long time, right? Very successful. I would say probably the most recognized influencer because she appears everywhere in their photos and everything. The other day, I just went to her profile, and they made a and she has for her personal brand. She has specific colors that she uses: a color palette, orange, blue, light blue. That, those are the colors that define her. So it makes, basically she made a deal with Puraya Bracelets where they made her own collection with her brand colors. And she literally posts stories, collection. We, have, we, we just got stuck of my own collection of the Dreaming Out Loud collection, Puraya Bracelets. And then like, like one day later, it sold out. And they open and close, open and close. And it's not because of the colors. Who cares about the colors? It's because of the relationship that Haley has with her audience. So, so powerful, man. That's, that's so good. Yeah. I realized that the other day and now that you say it, I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I saw that. Nice. Um, so one of the things you talk a lot about, uh, it, uh, that, you know, we've in pre-discussions as well, and I think you've alluded to this earlier, but I just wanted to make sure we, we put it in this way. Cause I think it's a really good way for people to think about it is you want people to move from being a marketer in their business, which is what happened with the dropshipping craze. Cause you could control the market.